Ken Levine is a gamer's game developer. Ken Levine is the type of guy to skip breakfast to make more time for game development. Ken Levine is the type of developer, along with others like Tamim Antoniadis of Ninja Theory and a pre-2013 goddess Peter Molyneux who deserve a size large bucket of money and endless development cycle to make their games. These are complex and detail-oriented minds who share an irrepressible and somewhat otherworldly imagination that just makes them perfect for game development. However, this creative spot can also at times butt heads and run afoul of the more corporate side of game development. So this is Seb from VG247.com and today we're asking, what is Ken Levine's new game after Bioshock? Bioshock Infinite released back in 2013 to largely unanimous applause and praise. The storytelling and writing was classic irrational game style, the world and lore felt immersive and alive, and the sound design and visuals to cap it off really did a fantastic job of provoking a sense of wonder and emotion in players. transcript of the prophet's recent address to you, the Colombian people. It wasn't always smooth sailing to get to this point though, as there were a few road bumps along the way. Take Two wanted to speed up the development cycle after Irrational was spent a few years iterating and experimenting without much tangible progress on the single player. In order to do this, many features and design concepts that Levine had in mind had to be cut. Now this is nothing new in game development, and it's actually often necessary to balance the creative energy of a director with the stature of Ken with the more business-minded and deadline-oriented approach of a publisher. There are numerous and too many examples to list of where a promising project can briefly or sometimes terminally lose its way due to slightly over-ambitious developers lacking someone above them to give them a metaphorical kick up the butt. Bioshock has always been one of the biggest and most loved franchises in gaming because of its uniqueness, and myself and many gamers were hopeful and almost expectant that a new, even bigger and badder entry to the series would be coming up next. Unfortunately for us, Ken seemed to dash hopes of a similar game coming anytime soon though in an interview with Rolling Stone in September 2016. He said, It changed my life in terms of what it did to my health and what it did to my view of making games and my relationships with people. I think the natural expectation was that I would go on and do the next bigger and better Bioshock game and I felt, I think I'll fail if I do that. I think I'll lose my mind and my marriage. So my solution was to quit. This was obviously very upsetting to hear at multiple levels and especially for fans of Ken's work who had been hoping to hear of positive developments. We have heard a lot about studio crunch and the mental challenges of difficult working conditions recently and this interview really struck a chord. But then, a glimmer of hope at last, as at EGX 2017, in his first public appearance in two years, he spoke about his new game and even acknowledged the need for policing his own ambition and imposing some self-restraints. What, what do we want to make? You know, what's the game we want to play? What do we feel is missing out there? And we just make that. And it's the team, because it's small enough, everybody's engaged in the conversation. So it's really this great collaboration where we're just making the thing we want to make. And we've spent the last, you know, sort of two years, or more years, just sort of sitting in a room doing R&D and coming up with this approach. And it's, you know, it's, it's totally different way of making a game than I've ever done before. The game that I think inspired me most that we were maybe onto something on the right track was Shadows of Mordor um, with, the, with the Nemesis system, which is my favorite part of that game. And that's a very, it's a very limited, rudimentary approach to it with, that covers a very narrow area. But boy, when I, under, when I sort of understood that I could kill whatever orc boss I wanted and whatever order I wanted and really drive, you know, and you know, who I would kill and who I would convert, all that stuff. It's more of a meta narrative and there's not a lot of dialogue support for that stuff. So our thing is much more ambitious. We've often scratched our heads wondering why no one else had tried to implement their own nemesis style system up until XCOM War of the Chosen and AC Odyssey gave their own excellent twists on it. Is it just too hard to code and implement in existing franchises? Well, thankfully not for Ken and his studio, who again described his new project as a deeply systemic game. Now in the last of tiny details we can piece together, in October of 2018, Ken replied to a fan who asked if he was working on anything by saying, we've done some friends and family testing, but that's all at this stage. He also referred fans back to his 2014 GDC speech where he spoke in depth about narrative design, storytelling and game development. Ken says he loves systemic games and that XCOM and Civ are some of his favourites because of the replayability and player driven narrative. XCOM, Civ, Shadow of Mordor and Bioshock. It sounds highly ambitious but imagine if this was really pulled off. 
So what can we safely and accurately take from this revealing statement, coupled with his in-depth explanation of his game design ethos? Well, there is at the very least a bare-bones, playable, vertical slice demonstrating some sort of proof of concept or mechanic that Ken has been working on. It's impossible to say how far along this is in terms of art, story or any sort of real detail. We can, however, look back at a showcase of a vertical slice Ken did showing off some gameplay examples in Bioshock Infinite that were ultimately cut during the development cycle. Old wooden roller coasters that stacked upon another wooden roller coaster in this city and jumping from one to the other with weapons, with, you know, with people shooting at me. I just wanted to get that feeling. And, you know, this isn't a monorail. This isn't a people mover. This is something that is incredibly vertical. It's incredibly open-ended. So now with Levine's new studio, Ghost Story Games, forging a new relationship with Take-Two, the metaphorical shackles off and full creative control in the hands of Ken, Will we be getting a spiritual successor RPG adventure with the complex dynamic systems and gameplay that Ken has always wanted? Odds are, we may have to wait for an extended period before hearing anything more concrete, but boy oh boy, when we do, we have an infinite amount of reasons to get excited. And that's it for this one. Let us know what your expectations are, are you looking forward to Ken's next big title? Will it ever come out? Or do you think it will even be anything like Bioshock at all? As always, share your thoughts down below, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video, and for everything else Bioshock fan theory, keep it locked here on VG247.com.